This is the demo video for the research paper Learning to Map Natural Language Instructions to Physical Quadcopter Control Using Simulated Flight. This work was done by Waltz Blukis, Yannick Terme, Ivan Miklasen, Ross Knepper, and Joab Artsy at Cornell University. In this example of our task, the agent will execute the instruction once near the rear of the gorilla, turn right and head towards the rock, stopping once near it. The input is the first person RGB image on the left and the agent's pose estimate. The image is captured with an onboard camera and is subject to noise and changing lighting conditions. The output is a continuous velocity command or a stop signal. On the right is the third person view of the environment and agent. The agent cannot see this view and it only has the first person camera. The agent starts off facing to the right and initially does not see any of the objects mentioned in the instruction. So we will turn right as directed by the instruction and explore the environment to address the partial observability problem and find the rock. As soon as it is confident that it has seen the goal near the rock, it plans a trajectory and follows it by continuously outputting control commands. To make this possible, the agent predicts where it should go in form of two probability distributions or environment locations. We can visualize these distributions in overhead view, but the agent does not have access to this view of the environment. The red distribution is the probability that the agent should visit that location while executing the instruction, and the green distribution is the probability that the agent should stop at that location. The green bar shows the agent's belief that it has seen the goal location. If the bar is low, it means the agent believes that it has not seen the goal and needs to explore the environment. When the bar is high, the agent is confident that it has seen and located the goal. Since in this example, the agent initially does not see neither the gorilla nor the rock, it is unable to infer the goal location. As soon as the agent observes the rock, it is able to accurately predict the goal location and execute the instruction. This is another example with a slightly more complex instruction. After the blue bale, take a right towards the small white bush. Before the white bush, take a right and head towards the right side of the banana. This instruction includes references to three different objects, the blue bale, the white bush and banana, and a spatial relation on the right side of the banana. The instruction includes two mistakes. The blue bale is actually a container and the white bush is actually a rock. Nevertheless, the agent is able to correctly compute the task. In this example, the instruction is head towards the area just left of the mushroom and then loop around it. This is a fairly common failure example. In this case, the agent predicts correctly that it should fly to the left side of the mushroom, but does not quite capture the motion of looping around it. During execution, a spurious prediction causes the agent to veer to the right, but nevertheless, the agent recovers from this behavior in a 360 degree turn and successfully reaches the predicted goal location. So how does it work? The model is based on a position visitation network. It is a neural network model that consists of two stages. The first stage predicts where to go in form of two probability distributions or environment locations. The green distribution here is the probability of stopping at a location and the red is the probability of visiting that location. The second stage of the model then generates actions to steer the quadcopter along high probability positions and stop at a likely goal location. Collecting training data in the real-world environment is expensive and time-consuming. For this reason, we train jointly on real and simulation data, but without any real-world flight during training. This allows our system to experience diverse use of language and simulation by learning to follow tens of thousands of crowdsourced instruction, which enables generalization to new and previously unseen instructions while using only a small amount of data on a real-world quadcopter. We introduced a training algorithm to Surreal, supervised and reinforcement asynchronous learning. It trains the two model stages simultaneously, but in two concurrent processes. Stage 1 is trained with supervised learning in process A to predict where to fly. Stage 2 is trained with on-policy reinforcement learning in process B to generate actions. Policy rollouts generated in process B during reinforcement learning are added to the dataset used for supervised learning in process A. 
As a result, stage one adapts to the state distribution induced by the entire policy, allowing it to learn error recovery behaviors as demonstrated earlier. In essence, we use supervised learning to learn all vision and language reasoning, achieving much better sample complexity than using end-to-end -end RL, but at the same time, Surreal learns from on-policy experience for robust controller dynamics. We use a domain adversarial training objective to learn domain invariant internal representations so that the same model can be used in both simulation and real world. To address partial observability, the agent explores the environment as directed by language. To do so, it predicts its own belief that it has seen the goal location, and during training, stage 2 is trained to behave in a way that increases the belief that this goal has been observed. In essence, stage 1 predicts the probability that the goal is seen, and stage 2 uses this signal to inform its exploration behavior. In summary, we present the first method for following natural language instructions on a real robot from first-person observations without manually designed symbolic representations. We introduce Surreal, a new joint sim and real learning algorithm, and a method for language-directed exploration. Thank you. For further details, please refer to our paper.